While the idea of orbiting space colonies remains on the table, scientists are further along with plans to settle somewhere that might feel a little more familiar. On the surface of the moon, Mars, or even asteroids. Among those places, the vast resources found on asteroids might hold the key to an industrial revolution in space. The asteroids are the key to an affordable program of human exploration for our civilization. So the main advantages of the asteroids for human settlements is that they allow us to engineer worlds in space that provide all of the needs for human habitation. The biggest advantage of colonizing asteroids would be the ability to mine valuable materials, such as rocket propellant, and certain raw materials and metals that are scarce on Earth. We, we concluded that the asteroids were the best place to mine for, for delivering material to Earth orbit. The asteroids right now are known to be the greatest resource of mineral resources. Economically, one asteroid could produce a trillion dollars worth of revenue uh, over a short period of time, uh, mining it and uh, transporting it to Earth. And there are companies seriously planning to go out and, and capture those. The interesting thing about the asteroids is that that kind of research can combine um, efforts to avoid asteroid collision with Earth. At the same time, we're mining them for, to get the resources for Earth. The asteroids are a goal for space resources for two reasons. One, in terms of the energy and rocket propellant required to get there and back, they're the most accessible targets beyond low Earth orbit for humanity. Two, they have many valuable materials that can be used in space. The first valuable material that we'll harvest from asteroids are the ingredients in rocket propellant. If we can turn the asteroids into refueling stations in space, we can dramatically drop the cost of human exploration. The main asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter and the so-called Jupiter Trojans, which are co-orbital with Jupiter, are where most of the known asteroids are found. But other families of asteroids orbit close to Earth. Several missions have been sent to visit some of them. The first one was asteroid 433 Eros. In February 2002, NASA's near-Earth asteroid rendezvous probe landed on its surface. A second near-Earth asteroid, 25143 Itakawa, was visited in 2005 by a mission of the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, or JAXA. So the Hayabusa mission, which was performed by JAXA, went out to the asteroid Itakawa, and they actually took a, a very small sample from the surface of that asteroid. It was a little less than one milligram of material. The fact that asteroids are small rocks floating in space has several advantages. One of the greatest is their low gravity due to their small size, which reduces the cost and risks of landing there compared to the Moon or Mars. It also makes construction much easier. The fact that there are over 300,000 asteroids identified to date is another advantage, offering a large number of possible sites. There are asteroids everywhere in the solar system. There are carbon-rich, metallic, and stony asteroids. And this variety in chemical composition makes them potentially useful for building or fueling spacecrafts. Material mined from asteroids could be a basis for a trade economy, 
Precious metals may even be returned to Earth or other colonized worlds for economic gain. And with public-private partnership, we can build the infrastructure that moves industry and space, not in 20 or 50 or 100 years, but starting in three or four or five years. And we can be harvesting rocket propellant in less than 10 years and building the transcontinental railroad to the solar system. Many asteroids contain large amounts of water and other volatiles, as well as carbon, all of it necessary to support life. The ones that we're gonna be interested in first are what we call carbonaceous chondritic types. And the magic constituent that they have that we're gonna be after is water. These resources could also be transported to other places in the solar system where they are scarce and at a much lower cost than launching these materials from larger bodies like the Moon or Mars. We get better space propulsion utilizing the asteroid volatile material, the water and carbon dioxide, which we can convert into rocket fuel. We'll have more mobility in space, and as that happens, we'll go further and further into the solar system, and that's the first small industrial scale mission to bring back an economically important quantity of rocket propellant that can change the economics of space. But to make this potential mining industry a reality, we'll need to solve several challenges. Private companies are leading the way. We expect to be mining asteroids in uh, somewhere in the next uh, six to 10 years. The idea of a mining industry on asteroids could become a reality much sooner than we think, but only if we can solve several challenges, such as the asteroids' low gravity and zero atmosphere, which make them vulnerable to cosmic radiation and the impact of small objects. Several private companies are taking the lead. In 2012, Planetary Resources announced a plan to harvest resources from asteroids, despite a few opponents who doubt the efforts would be profitable. No matter how abundant the resources are, the cost of extracting them would be much higher than on Earth. There are some materials that potentially could be of use on Earth. Uh, platinum group metals is usually mentioned. It, however, is very difficult, at least now, for um, asteroid mines to compete with Earth mines. But Planetary Resources thinks that the plan will be profitable if they're able to develop technologies that reduce the costs of spaceflight. One way to do that would be to create facilities in space, such as propellant production plants. The asteroid mining company Trans Astra plans to produce propellant by using the water contained in asteroids. Molecules of water would be split into their atoms of hydrogen and oxygen using solar energy. 